One of the greatest quotes of all time is that which was made by John C. Maxwell when he opined, everything rises and falls on leadership. How true could this be? Or rather, what could be more true? I am very fascinated by leadership because it enables an individual to see ahead of what others are not seeing. Leadership provides us an opportunity to look forward and further away from others around in order to anticipate the future, predict potential challenges, and keep helping others to prepare and solve emerging problems. Long before I was born, and as I have read and heard, there lived a generation of leaders who were most obsessed about functionality of leadership and the role they played for the people more than the position they occupied. For them, it was never about the position, benefits, or entitlements, but about filling the gaps and supporting the people to heal from their pains through quality and effective service delivery. They lived among the people and felt the pains and joy of the people. They grew among the people, knew what it meant and felt like to suffer all around the sun just to put food on the table. And this inspired most of them to graduate into voices that made sure that the needs of the people were met irrespective of their gender, their religion, and their ethnic status. The reverse is the case today because we seem to have a generation of people who want to occupy positions without a clear vision or well-stated description of duties. I have over time realized that the biggest disease of, to our collective success as a nation is our lack of vision. I discovered that among the different types of leaders, most of them were propelled to notoriety through circumstances and events, which somehow made history to classify them as leaders. And for this reason, the function of leadership has been greatly abused and will keep getting abused because positional leaderships are more than functional leaders. One of the high points of leadership development of any nation is dependent on how credible the leaders are. And this can only be established through action and not words. And I strongly believe that when the security, security and welfare of the people are top priority, the leadership will be demonstrated by what they are doing and not what they are going to do. But the case is different today because we have a generation of people who are more soaked up in, in casting vague and immeasurable visions which further deepens the problem eating up our nation. Leadership is basically about taking daily actions and not mere words. It has so much to do with leaders' far-sightedness, determination, self-confidence, and sense of good judgment. Today, it is no-brainer that the relationship between leaders and followers is constantly driven by fear instead of love and respect for the people. How true is it that the nation can only be successful as their younger generation? In conclusion, we have enormously huge resources, but what is the usefulness of accelerating so fast in the wrong direction? Hence, we need to get our visions to be sharp while our goals must be clear. But above all, we must be able to develop very strong will with a commitment to face our challenges, question the status quo, and solve our problems by ourselves. Position without function will produce a disastrous leadership. Function even without position will always produce a transformational leader. Wow. <laughs> Raymond, I, I think you, 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 really, you really nailed it. Um, I think the way we structure leadership or leading is also um, fueling this whole idea of focusing so much on positional leadership. Um, sometimes I ask people, when you call someone a manager, what does it mean? Yeah. Right? I, I, I struggle a lot with titles. I struggle with titles because, um, don't forget, we came from a very uh, suppressed foundation. A slave is suppressed now. The, the, the people who were freed are now re-enslaving themselves. So when you call someone a manager, you put in his head or mind, you are, you are controlling people. But it's about responsibility. It's about yes. daily actions. Mm -hmm. I would rather that they, we, we, sometimes we might start from the nomenclature. Yeah. Change the nomenclature. Yeah. When you enter an aircraft, they say someone is a pilot. We know what a pilot does. Yeah. A pilot is the person who, who is charged with the responsibility of ensuring that the cockpit 
is functioning, the aircraft is flying, but they call someone a manager and he's just busy bossing around people. So maybe we need to start from changing the nomenclature and the defining uh, leadership from the place of responsibility and mm. not uh, uh, rights. Because position just confers your, yeah. your rights. So let's go from the place of your responsibility, your obligation, beyond just your rights. There is something Raymond said that got my attention, where you mentioned the idea of lack of vision. The fact that Nigeria and even Africa in general is plagued with leaders who don't have vision. Mm. You know, when you hear most persons talk, they say the problem of Nigeria is corruption. No. I don't agree. I think corruption is just one of the problems, but that is not the major problem. Because as long as I'm concerned, incompetence is worse than corruption. Mm -hmm. You look at the world, you discover that there is no system you will look at, and you discover that the system is completely devoid of corruption. Mm -hmm. But why are they progressing maybe in Europe? For instance, the recent American election revealed that the concept of in an infallible American democracy is simply a myth, right? Mm. So, but why are other countries or why are other continents progressing? It's simple. They have leaders who are very visionary, okay? And they are backing up this vision with great competence. So because they have a great vision backed up with great competence, you discover that a combination of vision and um, competence obscures the impact of corruption. Mm. So even though they may be corrupt in little ways, they are still doing a lot of things to develop their nations. Mm. So because I think functionality starts with a vision. For you to be a functional leader, you must have a vision. You discover from the presidency that the vast majority of Nigerian politicians get to power without a plan. Mm. The president had been trying for years. He tried four times, eventually became president, and this is where Nigeria is. That is proof that his ambition to become president is purpose-led determinism. He didn't have an agenda. He didn't have a vision. He didn't have a plan. Just wanted the, position. the agenda is, let me get to that position and be called president. And, and, and I think, you know, we have it today, even as... You know, in the lead up to, I'm very, very passionate about this issue about, you know, positional and functional leadership because I think that is really where the problem is. When I hear people talk about uh, corruption, I don't really give, you know, attention to it because corruption is not about people that are in power. It's not about uh, the presidency. It's, it's, it goes down to even the universities. It goes down to the schools. It goes down to the homes and all those stuff. I, I, I try to focus on the fact that what is the connecting point where, from where you are, where are you going, and what are you willing to put in to get to the to get that result that you want? So we have a lot of people. I was privileged to be a you know a political office holder at some point during when I was still growing up, and I left that space because I saw a lot of positionality more than functionality. So we see a lot of people who like like when we started, I was telling us that. I, I, I told you guys earlier that there are a lot of people who circumstances or events made history to classify them as leaders. So you see someone who is a cultist, who they know that he fights very well. Mm. He knows how to destroy people's homes. Mm. As a result, that circumstance confers on him because yeah, each time he easy. comes to shout, every other person keeps quiet. Automatically, yeah. he is seen as a mm. leader. Why? Because circumstance conferred him and not the function, not the result. He produced. And the child, the, what you will always find out is that this person gets into the space without plan. And that's why you see some of these people, they don't want to come out. Because they don't have the functional attributes. Yeah. There is nothing that can sustain them. It is Functional leadership is sustainable. Mm. Positional leadership, you get frustrated immediately you are out. Yeah. So they know that immediately they go out from that place, they forfeit the right that you mentioned. Yeah. They forfeit the right. Mm. There is no sense of responsibility. People will no longer see them. People will continue to respect them, provided they are in that space yeah. where they are called all kinds of big, big names. And I don't like that. I'm not a person of title, just like you. I, I, I think one of the major problems, or one of the major reasons why Nigerian political space is mostly full of positional leaders mm. is tied to remuneration that is attached to those political offices, right? Mm. So you discover, let's say, for instance, Every governor in Nigeria, the least governor receives the at least security vote of 400 million naira monthly. That is not allocation. That is not his salary. Security votes are largely unaccounted for. 
So you discover that because of the huge financial incentives there, the vast majority of people going for those political offices are not going there because they want to serve or change a generation. They are going there because they want to amass wealth, right? For them, it is an opportunity to take leverage of the lagis in Nigeria. So as long as, when you look at Nigeria, you discover, for instance, that Nigerian lawmakers are the highest paid in the whole world. The world. And Nigeria is not top 10 richest countries in the world. So when you discover that the position of leadership is one that gives you an empire for generations to come, you discover that only few persons have the incentive to go there to serve. But secondly, because of something Raymond mentioned, the rule of law. The fact that once you find yourself in a particular space, you're already above the law. In fact, justice and law does not concern you as long as you're in that space. You discover that people have other meager incentives beyond service to go for that position. What also happens is that because they always or almost always have a kaba or carcass, you discover that they continue to rotate power amongst Among themselves. So the people who actually have vision, who are able to function, who are intellectual and sound enough to do this, don't get to the corridors of power because the people on top only circulate or allow people in their circle. And I always say it, Nigeria is a kakistocracy. The smartest black people in the world are led by the dumbest of their kind, right? And it is a big problem. As long as these things continue, I don't think we're getting anywhere. You know, the thing is, so, so, so question now is, so how do we, how do we, where do we go from here? Um, I think it was um, Erufai that was, it was a particular show he was on. And he was talking about how he was, he was challenging young people to, you know, he said, go and take the power right nobody's going to give it to you take the power as as raw and um unfair at me it's, 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 as it, it may sound i think it's it's looking more like it the guys who have this reins of power because of the privileges the perks and the, the sense of you know high superpower that is conferring on them they don't want to let go of it you know, being in political office is like being a, 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 a movie star or a musical star most of them fall into depression once they are no longer on the stage because that's where they derive their essence from. Well, maybe we need to start from um, the homes, right? Let, let's begin to put a lot of focus on functionality. Mm. It's not you are, what function are you playing? Mm. Let's start from our little mm. circles. What function? Let's place a lot of emphasis on functional. Mm. You know, let's reward people based on functions they play, not based on titles. You know, you see a BSc holder who can do the job, and there's an HND holder or even someone who has College of Education um, certificate oh. who is getting the job oh. done. But you're paying the guy who has BSc or who has masters or who came back from abroad, who just has the paper but can't get the job done. Can we pay for functionality? Even in the corporate, I challenge corporate Nigerians, pay for co functionality, not for you know, the title or positions people... And I think that's about. one thing that has really helped a lot of... If, if you look at the statistics of some developed nations, you find out that they are focusing mostly on functionality more than they focus on whatever position that you are mm. and all those stuff. All right. We have now come to the end of this week's episode of The Advocates. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook at Plus TV Africa using the hashtag the advocate ng or on twitter and instagram using at plus tv africa don't forget to use the hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus tv africa.com forward slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at plus tv africa till next week same time on this station let's keep advocating for a better society see you all right Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, does, it does. It does. It does. It does. I don't know what we can do 
if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.